welcome back. And our final segment for today is speaking about the Belizean film, Time is Money. And joining us for this conversation is Gildan Roland, who is the an actor and co-producer. We're joined by Aaron Laureano, actor and executive producer, and MIK rapper, songwriter, and actor. Good morning, mm -hmm. gentlemen, and Good thank morning. you for joining us. Good morning, Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. So let's start talking about uh, the concept for the film itself, where it got started, uh, and how long ago as well. Um, the film got started mm -hmm. um, from February mm -hmm. uh, a year ago. Um, this movie got started with uh, me, myself, personal. It was nobody involved, just yeah. me one. And I said, um, I think I'm ready to make my second movie. Mm -hmm. And um, I had the concept from my brother. Mm -hmm. He's a um, he's a what you call a counselor at the prison, mm -hmm. and um, he talks to a lot of inmates and stuff all the time. And he talked to me about the situation, and he was telling me that um, what is going on is not a good thing. Mm -hmm. It's like you do your job perfectly done to find out that these guys come right back. Mm -hmm. So I start think about it myself and figure out why is it happening and what can I do to make something different about it. Yeah. And then I bring up this movie, Time is Money. Did you write a script? Um, yeah, I started the script and uh -huh. then um, as they join in, they start add to it, yeah. change it up a little bit with some of their ideas and then it grew from there. Yeah. What made um, you get in, involved? Am I key first and then do that? Well, I was at the studio dropping off my new joint and I met him, you know, and he came over with a song track from the movie and he told me like, M.I.K., I have this new movie right here. I would love your idea to come in as a star role mm -hmm. with your characteristic. You can bring a lot to this movie. And I went home and I thinking about it, I say, okay, let's try this acting thing. And I went there and all and two days time I came up with a brilliant script for Key, this character. Mm -hmm. You know, and I just went in and went all out in the movie and just having fun at the same time, keeping it real, being real. I know everything just came out just like everything fell in place perfectly for my character that I was playing and I really so you had wrote to, your character. Yes, I didn't really have to force it or nothing. I just had to be natural and just be real with the character. So what was the and inspiration for your character? Well the inspiration for my character was key. Like, you know, I live where, where we live in, we live on the south side of Belize. So mm -hmm. we see everything right in front of us. So Kay is a character that is a street hustler. He's out there every day hustling on the block, you know, he get to a point that he get uh, where is it? He got robbed by one of his own friends for a package that he sent to his friend, didn't want to pay him. And from then, he just went criminal minded because he wanted to help somebody come up out the hood and the same person he tried to help rob him. So he just went criminal minded. He hooked up with this dude over here, Smokey. He got fired too and he was not thinking straight. We didn't know what to do. We needed money. A lot of things was floating wrong in Belize. A lot of shipment and things. And we say, yeah, where it going? It's that point at the time that we just stopped us the thing and we just started to take everything from all the big heads there where they out there hustle and have it and that's what we started though we just started move from and watch everybody where they, where they throw big events and the big drug dealers and everybody and we just started going there and just take what we want you understand and start to help for yourself <clears throat> Aaron how much would you say is the movie a real depiction of life in Belize um, well, it's based on the basic reality on the everyday lifestyle. Mm -hmm. Bottom line is that this is what's happening in Belize today. This is what we're facing, mm -hmm. um, our economical crisis behind crime and violence. This is it here. Mm -hmm. This film is actually telling you, don't live like this. If you are a youngster out there and you are motivated by someone who is telling you, man, let's go get somebody, mm -hmm. then you got the wrong idea. And that's why I make this movie to tell you, this is 15 years of experience. Don't do this. Yeah. It doesn't work. Let's now, get Gildan. Yeah. Gildan, you're an actor. Yeah. So, so this is not your first time. But uh, the character that you portrayed, did you also write your own character? And what was the inspiration for that? Uh, um, well, life. I live life. And, and um, experience is the best teacher. So uh, all my life stories and the poetry that I have and the, the way I try to come about is to try to uh, encourage and empower other people 
you know, to either change their way or see a better way out than what is happening right now. Um, my role in this movie basically is to show that it's not just a person uh, wanting to be a criminal who becomes a criminal. Sometimes, you, you know, it's, it's just the circumstances mm -hmm. and the opportunity to so become, you know, because in this movie I, I, I walked off my job and stepping outside I found a gun. Mm -hmm. So, you know, then I went down the street and they abstract my money, you know. So, when you think about it, 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 it turns regular and normal people based on the circumstances in their life and what they experience either by authority or otherwise, mindset change and different things happen. You know, so what I try to do right now, and, and I, I prefer to speak Creole because yeah. uh, I'm comfortable with Creole, Mr. Belizean, right? Yeah, um, basically what I want the people to understand that anybody could do anything, mm -hmm. but the best for you to take the positive out of the negative in order to make you succeed. Now, you know, Aaron, just let me just get sure. one question to him because I think that is such a, you all wrote your own roles, which means these are things that you've seen, experienced, maybe even lived. Right. Um, the issue that you used in terms of somebody who is employed, who went to unemployment, is one of the areas that I think people don't necessarily think about when somebody ventures into a life of crime. How do you depict that uh, transition from living straight to going into a life of hustle? All right, that's exactly the point. You see, sometimes, like I say, you're, you're there on the street, mm -hmm. and then for some reason or the other, you realize that people take advantage of the situation. Because most of the time, you have people who really need to have one job, and because of that, employers will have come and take advantage of you. Like, in you know, this case, they want I wash one car, and this is not part of my job description, right? So I just walk off of the job. I can't have you they, they undermine me, basically, right? And this is one of the things I believe is if you start to realize we need to start to create that, that, that ability to strengthen self in order to succeed. Because yes, each and every person need to work, but it not necessarily have to be the job you have. You see? Sure. And again, you must find a um, job where you have a passion for, in order for it to be rewarding and to make you put out your best. Yeah. I think in our most cases, I believe we will move backwards because we know they do exactly what we would have liked to do. No. And I, I wanted to ask Aaron a question because obviously getting people to come on board, you have a uh, skeleton script more or less of what yeah. you want. Cool. So how, who did the, the interweaving of the uh, characters that MIK and Gildan wrote um, to actually bring it into one thing to make it cohesive yeah. and not look like an add-on? Yeah, I did. Mm -hmm. I did. Um, how, how hard was that? Well, um, I guess we all have the same reality, so it doesn't, it's not that hard because um, after what he shares with me, we basically sit down and we plan it like, okay, this, I, I, I'm, I, I have a direction where we are going. Mm -hmm. So even if they was to come to me with something and say, okay, um, why would you think about this? Then I'm looking at it because I'm looking at the direction that I have to take the film. In other words, that misled the film to the public. Because if he bring a roller, two gangsters start to say, boy, we're like hardcore on this piece of it. I'm like, no man, turn it down and leave it there. So I, I don't want the young boy to get the wrong idea. I, I'm so glad you brought that up because that was really going to be my question. Uh, because it, we are also in a time where uh, the influences that young men have, um, it, especially depending on where they grew up and what they're seeing, um, it can seem a bit glamorized. Um, and it is a part of the everyday reality for some persons and they feel like they have no other choice. So does the film allow for a real depiction of what life is like without glamorizing and enticing more people into that type of life? Yeah, how do you do that? Um, yeah. Like there's one point when, in the movie when he asked him, um, K asked Smokey, he said, so, well, we had the body sleeping over come up on because they, they went to do a robbery. Uh -huh. I did the robbery for them mm -hmm. and gave them the money and then he's trying to find out what if they're gonna go shopping and all this stuff. Right there I could have 
edit the movie to the point where, okay, I showed him went downtown, get some clothes, buy expensive car and all that. Yeah. But instead, I tell him don't, to just say no. Yeah. So he was like, no, I think we should hold it back and mm -hmm. try to buy a vehicle and set up for make bigger moves. Mm. You know? So instead, I showed that this, this, this life of crime is something to be glamour about. Yeah. I try to more show that this is dangerous and it is bad for you. Yeah. Because if you watch the movie from the beginning to the end, none of them end up alive. You give out the whole ending. <laughs> <laughs> now we just yeah. have to find out how. Yeah. <laughs> um, right. Another thing, just to answer, yeah. um, real quick, the, the thing with um, with this movie, basically, the one who I want you to understand that while you like the life of crime and you actually hurt people in a real life, we could actually make one movie about your story or the things that you really want to do in your life. Put it on TV and you live and you make money and fight because right now you could come out and sell one CD. In prison, you can't do anything like that. So right now, I call to all the youth out there. Life not hard, right? And all of we could make it. They have an industry where we not tap into yet, I believe, and this is the industry, mm -hmm. the film industry to a level where we could really put, produce Belizean movies in at this level. And yeah. we have to go um, Belizean. We are Belizean, so make we create all the thing, mm -hmm. you know, and make we start to do things where we could relate to so that people could start to join the youth, they could have employment. Because this is not only about you being an actor, you could be an editor, you could be a person who do video, you could be a person who write. You need all of these things, so make we yeah. come in and do it. You know? Now, Aaron, you've had uh, a screening of it in Cayo. Yes. What was the response like? Um, I was not there in the day, so I, he was there in the day. I, I happened to went at the release party because I was not feeling well, I had the flu. Mm -hmm. So I couldn't have been there and, and um, I ended up had to fight my way to get to Kyle because I was the main person. Mm -hmm. So you cannot not be there. But from what he explained to me, um, Mm -hmm. It was good. It was it was it was great out there, you know. Shout out to the police force, number one supporter. Every single cop came from Kaya and buy a DVD. Some buy two for care home. So we love the response of the police force. Police force, they see that the youths can really put something in active success, the real life in the streets, and make something out of it in a reality style. So I applaud, you know, I applaud Mr. Brass Tato from Leadville. He called in already, I applaud with for the work over the door because they know we in the streets and they see the levels of the mind frame and the skills and the transition from an artist to an actor. But all we could do with the qualification of a talent, as long as we have the right drive to make it happen. Yeah. I think it's, yeah. and, and I, I'm very sure for the police officers themselves, it's an opportunity to show people a way of life that not everybody knows. <laughs> we hear the arrests and we talk about people going to prison, coming out and getting recharged, but we don't know the story behind it. Yeah. That's, that's one of my main goal. So um, as a Belizean film producer here in Belize, mm -hmm. um, I had my first movie before named Can't Take It No More that I won the film festival 2011 with. Mm -hmm. So I got an award for that movie, but my goal is to, I want to highlight more of what's going on that that people is not seeing. If I live in the area where you tell me, boy, listen, I don't forget to kick off and leave something, I tell them, boy, what do you think about whole lot down, man, and next thing I see you on the news, right. are you really going to do that for you? Then I know the thing to go with you, but I think to grab my camera and think, but we just say I write that down and shoot that and make something out of that, because you know the thing. Then when time you do your 15, I had to collect for the 15, right? Uh, if that what you want to do. Why try to transfer yourself into something instead of put yourself to nothing, right? Yeah. Now, um, let's talk about favorite scenes. Most powerful, most challenging, most impacting. Which ones uh, stand out the most for you? Let's start with MIK. Uh, my whole favorite scene is when I went to collect my money from Blacker. <laughs> Send Blacker a package over and I found because he have a wild sale on his block so yeah. I figured he could move this thing in three to four days and Blacker intention was like, no, nah, MIK and then they're in a run boat in the streets and they get trouble so they go on there and get gone down before anything else so we don't have to pay him because somebody are killed in the record the way how they move so he decided that he just want to take this you understand and i call and i asked for my money and he said he don't have no money for me this that so i went for the money then time white boy just come in and carry in and mm -hmm. came to heal him and his yard he was drinking he was smoking he was playing animals and when i came for my money he didn't want to pay me for my money and i had to discipline him 
and the scene was so dramatic when I disciplined him, the Canadian, the Canadian man that was in there, he got so frightened, you know, the way he braced against the wall. That was my best acting role, the way he braced against the wall. that he was really that scared. convincing that his friend died right here. This is the scene right here. You know, his, his friend died right there against the wall. And, you know, I stick him up to, I took away his cigarette that he was smoking. And I, and I took all the money off the table and I went out. So that, that was my most powerful scene in the movie. That yeah. I, you know, that, you guys? You understand? <laughs> <laughs> my partner showing the, um, the trailer, the, the, I, but the most uh, powerful scene, I want to really get the message across that when, two actually, uh -huh. when this um, young lady come and tell my lady she needs to move out because the life while they live this, that, but then she not realize that the life while they live that we provide better for my family. And I would have want the woman out there stop discourage other people, woman, from stick with them. Mm -hmm. Because social issues come in time, people in a single homes. Right, so stop the encourage your friend for left a man. I'm sure you mean that the next way around too, right? Oh, yeah. <laughs> I'm sure you mean that the next way around too. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, um, let me let me hit any point on yeah. that too as well. Um, that that scene right there where I did that with the young lady that came and said, "Girl, um, in the Indian jail, baby, and you need to move out. You need to left him." Because mm -hmm. the young lady sits on the step and she's saying that this guy likes staying with drug dealers, killers, and murderers. So what I'm, the reason I create that scene is to try to talk to the younger females to let them know that if that's not a life for you. That's not a life for your kids, for you to live like that. So as it goes on, she pack up and move out. She like, when he come like, what, this girl move out? Like, yeah, that's perfect. You're the sell drugs, you're the rabbi and teeth. Yeah. Nobody don't need to date you. Yeah. You know, so that was that scene. Well, I mean, but if we look at real life instances, we've had homes that were shot at because of people who are associated, and young kids, yeah. yeah, and young right. children shot in their sleep. So Correct. it's not a far, far off reality. Correct. So if that, if yeah. you, if you live with somebody, then expect that. Oh, you yeah, just tell yourself, I know this relationship I gone, which is the right thing to do. But that's not my favorite scene. No. My my favorite scene are when Smokey took the stuff to Polo. Mm -hmm. I know if you see that, or heard of that part. No, when, go ahead. Um, um, Polo, he called Polo on the phone and he tell him, he said, hey, Tony, he said, um, I need for sure, I got something wrong, I did some business. He's like, okay, come true. So when Polo sit there, Polo tell the dude, look, man, this busy to come, busy to bring four kilo, but I want to shot in my face, I no miss. Mm -hmm. And then when he brought the stuff in and he sit there and put all the stuff on the table, the guy run down and still miss him. No, you are the man hit man and you look to make everybody dead. So you, you know, leave it a comedy there. Yeah, because right? yeah. now you are the hit man and then he end up the kill the hit man and then he pack up and he end up the shoot polo and run out of the house with the stuff. Now, what I like the most about it is because he dropped right in front of me with everything. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, unfortunately, we are running out of time, but how can people get copies of the movie? Um, they can just contact us on our phone or um, Facebook or something. Go ahead and um, tell them. My name is Aaron Loriano. Uh, my number is 602-6171. You can just contact me or on Facebook or on my cell phone and get the movie. And if somebody else is out there selling it, and it's not the right person if it's not us. Right. <laughs> I like that. No boot legging. Yeah, yeah, good. Thing I would have just want to stick in there to, um, actually to, I would have want to say thanks again for this opportunity. And um, I want to give Polo a shout out. And he believes we know that um, Mr. Polo Lightburn, that the casting movie, director, right? they've seen a casting director <laughs> international movies too, yeah. right? So. Um, just whenever you hear a movie come wrong, Polo that the man we need for link, right? We have the company going already, you know, really give it to our name and register it yet, but yes, we have it going on. Right? And there are more opportunities for people to get that involved just, in acting now. And also in an international movie, yeah. because we just did a movie Heartbeat the same way. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Yeah. right, so, um, you know, the opportunity to be easy and tap into this, this Man, industry this, and do better, you know. Are we bang it out? I mean, Mr. Stephen Monroe, one of the top director in Hollywood where this car face on them movie applaud we the Belizean actors they like they want to, is this first time you, this can be the first time that's so like it's the first Trump time not trial it was like banged out for the Belizean and we went to play the bad guys again with the bad we the bad guys that's kidnapping everybody on the island so look out and thing, for and and um, um, San Pedro could look out for this weekend uh, okay you have your launch in San Pedro this weekend right, yeah, so what's the cost of the DVD um 10 Belize local. 10 that's and, um, I bring the two DVD for Thomas. Thank you very much. Right? <laughs> yes. Definitely, right?
Okay. All right, so pick it up for yourself. You can contact these guys to be able to uh, get your own copy of Time is Money. Uh, Belizean actors, Belizean producer, um, and of course shot on location Great. in and Belize. The and the movie the Talk Creole. And the movie Talk Creole, and about <laughs> real life in yes. Belize, yes. Yes. right? Yes. No, it's the guns, because the guns have none to I was about to say, while for some Correct. people they'll look at it and say it's too violent, I think if you want a good picture as to how things work within our society in how, some areas. It's strange how people meet me and tell me the movie actually funny. Mm -hmm. So I, it must have passed the violence, right? If they yeah. could laugh, right? Yeah. You know, so All right. Laugh Great initiative, guys. We look forward to seeing it and uh, we'll let you know what we think, right? Thank you very much. We're going to go ahead and wrap up the show. We're completely out of time. So remember, if you want to contact us, you can contact us at OYE at channel5belize.com. Marlene underscore OYE at channel5belize.com. And William underscore OYE at channel5belize.com. Have a great day, everybody. And be sure to join us tomorrow morning at 6.30 when you open your eyes. To start your morning right. Until then, keep your minds and your eyes open.